Hello again everybody, Dan John here from danjohnuniversity.com and danjohn.net. Uh, back to book reviewing again. There's a book I don't think got appreciated as much uh, when it came out. Now I have to be careful here. Uh, the author's a friend of mine and I wrote the forward to the book, which isn't unusual. It's Dan Cleather's The Little Black Book of Training Wisdom. What I like about it, and this is why I wanted to write the forward for him, is to, Okay, so Dan's my boss at St. Mary's, and he's really a bright guy. He's got a doctorate in this field, and he knows this stuff. And basically, he simplifies all the programming and all the things we're supposed to do as coaches into a simple little book. And I just want to raise two of the points he makes. First off, the most important thing we do, now this is true for fat loss, <laughs> getting a great education, being a good parent, is consistency. And that's so obvious when I say it. I, I always say repetition. I also say repeatable and doable and all that stuff. But every good coach will tell you the same things. Every good teacher will tell you the same thing. You know, you, you, you've got to practice. You've got to repeat. But what Dan just does such a good job of in this book is he reminds us that we can't allow ourselves to get in our own way. I think one of the biggest mistakes young coaches do and many athletes do is that they... They circle certain things, like the, the day they want to peak, the Nationals or something like that. And then they want to, they circle these really hard days. And then they throw in all this garbage that undercuts all the hard work. Which brings me to his second point, and I, I'm probably summarizing it too simply, but Dan's point about you should have hard days, and you should have easy days, and really be careful about anything else. Uh, he's got a great quote from the great uh, distance coach, Steve Magnus, uh, also a good friend of mine, where he talks about this uh, amazing 1,500-meter uh, uh, miler who does this workout that is just off the rails, unbelievable. Then he asks the students, well, what will we do the next day? And, of course, the students who all live in the world of linear progression, which works for newbies, they go, oh, well, let's see. If we did 20 sets of 400 meters in 50 seconds, Tomorrow, we'll do 21 sets in 48 seconds. And of course, as you can guess, uh, that doesn't happen. No, what happened the next day <clears throat> is the athlete didn't do anything, a full day of rest. When you look back at Bill Bowerman's contributions to track and field, uh, he's the one who brought jogging to the United States. And well, maybe, maybe we, we can hold that against him. And he brought us a certain shoe company that, uh, well, we won't hold that against him either. But his basic concept of training was hard, easy, hard, easy. And if you miss the part about easy, uh, you miss the whole thing. You know, I, I have issues with moderation. Now, I try to be a moderate person. Uh, a well-educated person is supposed to be able to, uh, you know, live a life, you know, be moderate. You know, uh, nothing is by itself good or evil. It's, you know, it's how you deal with it. But I tell you, moderate workouts can be a real problem because if you're a big engine or you're, you're, you really want to be great, there's a real good chance your moderate workouts become beginning very hard. Like the great coach Charlie Francis taught us, most athletes' problems is this, that their lows are too high and their highs are too low. Um, when I, I, I competed in a powerlifting meet one time at 3 a.m. in the morning, because uh, it was nobody left lifting. I deadlifted 628 pounds just so we all go home. And it took a while for me to recover from that single deadlift because my high was pretty high that day. And it took me a while to unpack the lessons of that weightlifting meet. And I, and I still think I'm unpacking them today. Um, but that's why I like Dan's book so much. Uh, it takes... It takes a research scientist like Dan, who has the ability to listen to good coaches, and then he finds that middle way, that moderate way, where everything, the research, ties into the coaching. And I think that's the mistake a lot of researchers make, is they, they kind of research things in a vacuum. Uh, those 12 freshman, 18-year-olds that they're doing the test on. And you've got to be able to step back apply it to the real world, high-end performance, what grandma and grandpa can do, and keep testing those waters too. 
Uh, Dan uh, wrote a great book here, and I'm proud to be part of it, and I think it's worth your time. I hope that helps. Thank you.